right, so if you're ready to launch your Uscreen site, there's just a couple things we'll wanna go over here, some kind of must-haves uh, for things you need to do right before you launch. So one kind of key thing here, uh, let's click on under our videos, we'll click on a particular video here, and you're definitely gonna to wanna to make sure that every single one of your videos has a full description and a short description. There's kind of some key areas here that these appear, and while they're not required, so you can save this without it, um, if you don't add them, there's gonna be some kind of blank spaces on your catalog and checkout pages here. So for example, on this particular video page here, I do have um, the long description here, full description, and if I click get access, typically when I haven't purchased this, uh, there is gonna, it's gonna show that short description in the checkout page. So just make sure that every single one of these has a full and a short description. Now, same thing for collections. Uh, you also have that full and short description, so make sure you fill out both of those. Um, the other kind of key thing here uh, that kind of relates to, again, empty content is custom filters. So if you've created any custom filters here, regardless of whether or not they're assigned to any content, they will appear in your catalog. So I have this custom filter here for beginner um, and let's say, uh, let's just go hard. Difficulty, beginner, and hard. Okay, so if I go back to my catalog and I go to filters here, I will see this option here and your customers will see that, but if they click on these and you haven't assigned them, they're just gonna say nothing was found, which, you know, if someone's brand new to your site, you've just launched it and they're checking things out, they find empty options here, it's just gonna look a little strange. They're not gonna, they're maybe thinking, oh, there's really not a lot of content here or why is this here? So make sure that when you have those set, you actually go to your videos and you at least add, under custom filters here, a couple videos to actually use those filters. Now, likewise, on this kind of same page here on the catalog, you have this category dropdown, and this is where it's really important that whatever categories you create actually have content in them. If they don't, just like the custom filters, it's better to delete them and add them later when you actually have content to add to those. So I have this upcoming live events that's completely empty, someone clicked on that, they'd be a little disappointed. So we'll go to categories here and upcoming live events. And we would just simply delete that one for now. And then I think live streams, I got something there, tools, my main category, perfect. So that's all working. Uh, same thing with author actually. So if you've created authors and they don't have any content assigned to them, uh, it's just gonna be best just to delete them um, for now. Okay. So that's kind of the main areas to check here within your content. And there's a couple other things I wanna talk about. Uh, one is under customization. And this one I've seen get missed uh, a decent amount here. So if you go to customize and then homepage customization, uh, go ahead and click, uh, what is it here? Ah, SEO settings at the bottom. A lot of people leave this blank, but what this is, is if someone searches like your main brand name for your site and they go to Google, uh, Google's going to cho choose which title and description uh, that they think is best for your site. So you can control that by typing in something here and putting something in the page description as well. Now, likewise, under common pages customization, there's a spot for your catalog SEO. And so that's just the title of this guy right here. So this should be something up here. You want to put some content in here uh, just the same. Now, and of course, if you haven't visited this page, um, I've seen some people miss this one, make sure you got a favicon, that's a little icon up there, um, a logo for your checkout pages. But these ones, you should be basically be able to find these by clicking around. Um, so if you click sign in, and you've got a logo here, and this is empty over here, you kind of know that you need a login page side banner here. So definitely just review this, make sure you have some content there for everything. Now, of course, if, you, if you've if you waited till the end, um, you might be in a little bit of a tight squeeze here, but definitely make sure that you're using the domain that you want. Um, I recommend getting this done, hopefully maybe a week or so before you launch. Uh, but we understand that sometimes you're using that domain and you have a very particular day that you need to launch. Uh, if that's the case, just reach out to our support team and kind of let them know in advance uh, when you would like to switch over so we can kind of coordinate with you on that. Now, another kind of key one is email templates here. These are definitely good. I would review all of these before launching. Um, your review is kind of simple as like opening that email up 
and maybe adding, you know, your own logo here into the HTML section here. You can kind of customize how this, how this looks and everything. Um, typically you, you don't really mess with anything within these, uh, curly braces here. Uh, these are going to auto populate some information to send to that customer. So especially for something like the order confirmation, it's not a good idea to kind of mess with the amounts or total sections here, just because those customers do need to see what they paid and what uh, kind of discounts they got on everything there. And then lastly, if you're anticipating a lot of sales on that first day, you might want to turn off these admin notification emails. These will actually go out um, basically every time someone uh, subscribes or makes a sale, in which case you might be getting spammed with the emails. Now, speaking of that, those emails there, whatever email you have under here is kind of is kind of where emails are going to be sent from. Um, so as those transactional emails are going out to customers, uh, make sure you've added something here. Otherwise, they're going to just come from, uh, I believe, no reply at uscreen.io. And if you want to make sure that your site's completely white labeled, uh, make sure you have something there. Likewise, uh, company address is pretty important to have. This goes out on any invoices for customers. And of course, I'm sure you've already set your currency, hopefully here, and then your storefront locale to whatever you like. Uh, and lastly, just make sure that if you did have that maintenance mode on, you turn that off when you're uh, ready to go live. Typically, a good thing to do is uh, click on your storefront over here and just sign out and then start going through all the different buttons on your pages. So if you've got some call to actions here, just go ahead and click on them. Um, basically, if you have a footer here, you want to make sure you click on all these links, make sure they're working. I've set up my own privacy policy page here, so it's a good idea just to test those. Um, you can tech, check on the social media links here. And you can see here, I've actually messed this one up. This one just goes to facebook.com. Same thing with Twitter. So in those situations, typically I'd go to customization, customize, homepage customization. We'll click on those uh, that footer option down here. And, in, and if I don't have anything for these, I can simply delete them and it'll hide that Facebook one. Otherwise I would just paste in my uh, Facebook page here and make sure that that's accurate. Uh, another kind of key one here is if you've got this, you know, learn how to make um, or whatever the, your title is here for your particular piece of content and you have all the device options down here for iPhone, Android, these are actually links. So someone clicking them, um, it's actually not going anywhere. So if you don't have those apps uh, to begin with, like if they're not launched yet, you can disable those here. So under all platforms. Um, I can just go show or hide. And so if I go show hide Amazon, um, it removes that device. And then Firelink, I think, is over there. That one's gone. Android TV, click that. Did I click? There we go. And so on. So just remove the ones you don't have. Um, it is okay to probably keep the iPhone and Android ones, even if you don't have those apps, just to let people know that your content is available on mobile browsers, that kind of thing. Um, but you can actually just uh, choose like or set a custom link here so it's not going to wherever that's going there. Okay, so that should be it for kind of the checklist of things to do. Hopefully that gives everyone some good insights on maybe the last few touches for their site. And of course, if you have any questions, please let us know.